Good morning, Jorge. Um, if you can unmute for me and we can see if the sound is working. I think the sound is working, right? Yep. Good morning, Brian. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. So that's that, that's the, the 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 good thing of having a few minutes uh, minutes left. We are live on stream, but that doesn't matter. Um, if you can share your screen already, I will I will mix it in whenever we are uh, we are ready to go. Um, you will be instructed how uh, how this will work, and I will uh, uh, just give you a, a short introduction in a few seconds, and then we just keep rolling because the stream is rolling anyway. Um, so you know what the time frame is. Let's go for it, right? And I see your screen is uh, is coming up. Amazing. So um, again, we already had the second or the, the first talk. We are up to the second one already. It's going way fast, faster than uh, I would imagine. But again, we have uh, a few more hours to go. I would say uh, picking up a twenty four hour conference is uh, well. We'll we'll see afterwards how I will be uh, at the end of this uh, whole trek. Uh, welcome, Jorge. Um, I love that you being here and you're going to talk about async uh, JavaScript error handling. Um, I cannot see your screen yet. Uh, have you shared your screen or did you, if you want to please try to do it again. And in the meantime, I will just keep, uh, keep talking. I see Jorge's screen and I will add it to the stream right now. And we see his screen. All right. Jorge, the I pronounced correctly? Yeah, that's correct. Jorge. 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 It is Spanish, right? Yeah. Or is the, the name is Spanish. Amazing. Spanish, yeah. So, I'm in Spanish. Okay, amazing. I would say um the floor is yours. Give it a go, and I will jump in uh, five minutes before the end with uh, questions that are coming up in the Slido or in the track JavaScript uh, thing. It can be that somebody else will come up, but one of the hosts will come up, probably will be me. So let's give it a go. The Amazing. Floor is yours. Thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, so hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, I'm very proud to be part of this. Um, welcome to my talk in the, all the talks online organized by um, Snakes and other partners. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, a, a bit, just a bit. Um, it's a very inter it's a, an introduction to um, um, async error handling in in JavaScript um, and some uh, snippets and some uh, helpful tricks that you could use when uh, working with JavaScript, Node.js, uh, async traces and errors in general, um, which always comes handy, right? Um, so yeah, I think so. I'm I'm based in the in Spain at the minute. Um, it's eleven in the morning. Um, so uh, hello and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to. Uh, everyone that's listening um, and that has joined the stream or that will join later, Sydney, Singapore, Shanghai, New Delhi, Moscow, London, San Francisco, New Zealand, lots of people from New Zealand. Um, welcome to my talk. Now, I need to breathe. Uh, usually when I'm delivering uh, talks in front of a wider audience, I, I usually have to breathe like uh, two times or three times before I come into into the topic, um, but now it, it feels like I'm talking to the wall, you know, but um, stay good. I know that you're you're back there listening to me um, and I hope you appreciate this talk and you learn something new today. So yeah, my name is Jorge. Uh, sorry if I haven't introduced myself yet, um, though Brian did. Um, and I'm an engineer. I am working at the moment at, uh, at Dyson um, with the connected products. I'm I'm a senior engineer trying to um, uh, trying to make the connection between the Dyson products, like the robot vacuum cleaners, uh, air, air purifiers, etc., uh, to connect to the cloud as seamless seamless as possible. Um, and yeah, my background is Node.js. Uh, I can do a little bit of C sharp, a little bit of Golan, um, but yeah, this this time is going to be only. JavaScript, right? Um, you can find my web page on the on the corner and also my Twitter handle. Uh, feel free to visit. So uh, when I start uh, a talk, I usually have a poll time where I ask the audience to raise their hands and get started into the topic to see um, how what's the level of the audience. Uh, but this time is not going to be possible. Um, so yeah, please uh, use the comment sections, uh, follow me on Twitter, like and subscribe, um, 
all that, right? Let's get into the topic. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about try catch blocks uh, in JavaScript. Uh, how do you handle errors? Uh, then, what is asynchronous programming and how you do? How do you do asynchronous programming inside Node.js? Um, then a little bit about error stack traces and um, new functionality from Node 12 that was released last year um, that help with this asynchronous stack traces. So uh, this is a, how um, a sample JavaScript code looks like. We have a function. We say, uh, go to the beach. At the moment, if the location is a Spain, you cannot go to the beach because we are in lockdown as most of the, most of the countries are there. Uh, but yeah, else return true, right? So if I try to go to the beach in the Antarctica continent, um, I can else, uh, if, if I, if it gives me a, if it returns a force, uh, I'll log a failure, right? So this is simple code. We are not, this is a, the way you handle the errors, uh, in synchronous code. Um, so we are not throwing an error, but we are returning true or false. Um, and then we can act, uh, accordingly, right? Now, if we want to do this, if we want to get into the async wall, um, it's going to be a bit more complicated given that when you schedule an asynchronous call, you don't know from where it's coming, where it's going, who, 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 who called it, um, and at what time, before what, afterward. It's, it's very complicated, right? So first, l let me quickly explain. Uh, the asynchronous programming, as most of you know, um, is a design pattern which ensures that non-blocking code execution. So when you schedule an async task, you can uh, the code can continue execute, executing all the tasks, synchronous or asynchronous, while the asynchronous ta task is in the background um, executing itself. Um, so JavaScript is asynchronous in nature, and so is Node. Uh, so if you are trying to get into JavaScript and Node.js, you should... Um, it's, it's a must that you learn how to, the basic of asynchronous programming. Um, and yeah, okay, the code executes with ha without having any dependency and no other. So it doesn't depend on other calls. It just, you trigger that action and it starts in the background executing and then it will come, come back when it has a proper resource. And this is, in, this improves the system efficiency and throughput because you can do several things asynchrony, asynchronously. Um, if you dive a, a little bit more into how async work in JavaScript and Node.js, you, you soon realize that it's not really asynchronous. It's not, it's not like you are doing a lot of things in parallel, uh, but it gives you the feel async of an async uh, task and it won't block the main thread. So the main thread is, it's going to continue spinning. And when the background task uh, has um, everything ready, it will return to the, it will return to the main thread. Um, so in the beginning, uh, there was callbacks. Uh, there were callbacks. Um, and using callbacks is how you will program uh, async functionalities using JavaScript uh, or Node.js. Yes. Um, but then that's, that's, that's way too old. Uh, I think it was ES6. Uh, so yeah, standard introduced it, what they call promises. Uh, which are a way of better understanding the callbacks. So in this code, we have the function go to the beach that returns a new promise, uh, that resolves in one second or a thousand milliseconds. Uh, so whenever you call go to the beach, um, it's going to wait one second or yeah, it's going to wait one second in the background and then return. So it's taking you one second literally to to go to the beach, right? I don't know, maybe teleportation or whatever. But um, so yes, we have our async function, go to the beach. And then we have uh, the, um, this little snippet that is dot then, uh, which helps you concatenate actions. So basically, when you call go to the, the go to the beach function, uh, it's not going to block the main thread. The main thread is going to continue doing whatever it needs to do, uh, serving HTTP requests or any, any other things. And then when go to the beach resolves after one second, the function that's inside the then is going to be executed. Um, that's why it's called then. Um, so in this code, what we have is go to the beach, uh, Antarctica, then success, right? So what this executes is it calls go to the beach, it waits for a second, and then it points 
success. So this is the very uh, basic sample with promises. Now, um, we can introduce more things, as I explained, while you're doing uh, this async task, when, when you schedule an async task, you can do uh, things on the main thread. So for example, what if we want to go to the, to the beach, but you need to turn the radio on, or you want to turn the radio on in the meantime. So while you're driving to the beach, you want to be listening to the radio. Um, so that's, that's why this is useful. This is asynchronous programming. So in here we have go to the beach again, Antarctica, then success. And we print, uh, we have that line console log turning on the radio in the meantime, uh, which appears to be, to, uh, appears that it's going to be executed after go to the beach, but because go to the beach is an, an async function, an async task, it's going to be on the background and it's going to last one second to resolve. The console log will come and will be printed before the go to the beach finishes. Uh, because console log is a synchronous function and it's not waiting for anything. Um, so this is when an async function comes to, to, to help us, uh, being uh, more performant and having more throughput and executing more actions in the same, in the same amount of time. Um, so what we have here now, let's, uh, let's keep adding things. Um, now using this async uh, stuff, we can continue uh, adding more and more actions into it. Uh, for example, in the, well, I'm going to skip this because this is Nietzsche code. Um, and we don't have much time left. Um, so basically when we go to the beach, after we arrive to the beach, we console log success and then we make bocata de tortilla. Bocata de tortilla is uh, basically a Spanish sandwich, right? With tortilla, most of you may, might know what tortilla is. Um, so yeah, when we arrive to the beach, we print success and then we make bocata de tortilla. And then when bocata de tortilla is done, which is we, we do it in one second, um, we print bocata is ready. If there's any error in here, we catch it with uh, that catch expression and we we print the, the lock, we print failure, right? So the problem with this is that we you are not in control of uh, what the errors and what the single actions and how to respond to the single actions. Um, you, you can have all this dot then um, doing like a waterfall, dot then, dot then, dot then, dot then, dot then, and they catch all the errors. Um, but it's going to be difficult if you want to uh, action over go to the beach or over make bocata de tortilla. If there's a failure in those, it's going to be catch in the main catch uh, section so how can we make this better um basically um because these promises is a bit uh it's a bit difficult to understand and to work with the errors then a new operator if you want to call it like that uh, was introduced to node.js and javascript which is async await now uh what async await is it's a uh, a lot of people define it as uh, the sugar on the top of promises. So we still have promises in the background, but this is a Nietzsche way of writing the code. So we have um, this await in here, and it's going to wait for go to the beach function to finish before executing the next line of code. So it's similar to the dot then, but we don't need to put the dot then. It's always going to be await this function, await this other function, await this function, await this function. And everything is going to look, uh, it's, it's going to be executed sequentially. Uh, Node.js is going to wait for each of the async tags to return to execute the next line. Now, what happens in if looking at this code, um, now it's not that easy to catch the error. So in the promises, we have this dot catch with will catch the error thrown by the promise or the failure thrown by the promise. In this code, now we have a single line, an expression that is await go to the beach. Uh, so it doesn't have any dot then or any dot catch. Um, how do we do that? Well, now it's when the try catch uh, expression or try catch a block or a logical block comes into action. Uh, on the left hand side, you have uh, a, a simple uh, block. So you have a try and then a catch. Try is going to try execute 
whatever is inside that block. And if there's any error, it's going to throw and it's going to be handled in the catch block. So this way we can have on the right hand side um, a try catch over the go to pitch uh, fun function. Um, so if there's an if there's any error, we console log the error. Now, how does this uh, work if we want to do several actions, like for example, maybe bocata de tortilla? So we have a wait, go to the beach. After that's execute, we print success. Then a wait, maybe bocata de tortilla. After that's done, then we print bocata de tortilla if ready. And if there's any error, we have this try catch that's going to print the failure. Now we have now all this se sequence of events uh, that we execute uh, one after the other. Um, but what about if we want to try and catch uh, errors on the maybe bocata de tortilla function? not on the global try catch uh, block we will end up like something uh, we will end up with something like that where we need to put two different try catches one try catch for the function for the action of going to the beach and another try catch for the action of make bocata de tortilla right so now this code is easy to read and but after some time writing, uh, if the code is complicated and you have a lot of uh, function, a lot of actions, um, you probably uh, are going to have a lot of try catches and your code is all going to look like try this, try this, try this, try this, try this, catch, 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 catch. Um, so it's a little bit unbearable when, when you have a lot of functions. Now, there's, um, well, now, I started learning Go, uh, Golan, um, a year ago or a year and a half ago, um, and I've always been, uh, I, I've always wondered how how the error handling was different to JavaScript and to the languages that I knew. Um, so this is an example of how to handle the errors the Golan way, uh, where you have this function uh, database dot query, and that function will return to objects or to variables, it will return data and it will return error, right? So now we could easily check if error is uh, is null or not, and then act if there is any error. How is this different to the try catch we had? Well, the behavior is the same, but you get rid of all the try catch palaver um, and then just have only one line that acts if there is uh, an error. So the execution will continue and just we just do a check. If there's an error, then I do something. We don't have this try block and then catch the error and the catch block. Uh, so it looks to, my, to me, it looks a bit neater. It's a shorter way of defining things. Um, this is an alternative way of uh, handling the errors. I'm not saying that you shouldn't stop using try catch. Try catches are always useful. Um, but this is, I just wanted to share with you another way of uh, handling errors. So this is how you're doing the Golan way. Uh, now, if we want to apply this to JavaScript, uh, this is going to be a little bit difficult to explain, but basically this is the same code we had, but now the functions will return an array with two values. The first value is the error, and the second value is the response. So whenever something goes right we send uh we send back as a result of the function the error being null and the result and if something goes bad then we we just return the error so in the code we can do what we saw in in the golem way um we execute the function and save the error and the response and if there's any error we act else we continue the execution you see now the difference between the two patterns, so we don't need the try catches, um, but we need to implement this weird way of returning two values, one is the error and the other one is the result. Um, so it looks convenient, but maybe a little bit complicated or convoluted. Um, so then, um, so I took this idea from from uh, a blog um, written by um, um, a guy um, who's, uh, last name is Grossnam. I don't know whose first uh, the first name, um, but yeah, you have the link in in that. Um, so he came with uh, with this little function, which is called two, and 
it accepts a promise and it will do the return it, it, it will handle the it will handle returning the right values for you so you don't have to return this uh, weird array it, you just call this function and it will handle if the promise is successful then it will return the error as null and will return the data if the promise or the function the async function was not successful then it will return the array with the error but not return the data so that's exactly what we want now if we use this function the code looks like this a little bit easier for implementing the function so you can see the go to beach function and the make bocata de tortilla function no longer have this uh, return array weird thing now we have it in the main two function uh, up here so whenever uh, in our main code when we call go to the beach we call it with a to function, which is going to convert that result of the promise into this uh, new format that we have with the uh, where we have an array where the first object is the error and the second object is the data. So this is how it looks like. I think it's pretty it's pretty neat, um, and I encourage you to to try it on your own projects to try it on the uh, Node repo or create a Node uh, JS program and and just play with with it. Um, yeah, this is a comparison where uh, before we had, so before it's on the right hand side, you can see the try catches. And now we have this let error response. We save the error and the response and then act if there's any error. Um, so yeah, I found this on the on this blog uh, from Dima. Yeah, Dima, Dima. Um, and say hi to Dima from here. Um, so Dima Grossman uh, came up with this nice blog post uh, explaining all this better than I have. Um, but yeah, you can you can go to to his blog and and check it out. Basically, at the end of the post, he says that this is a different way of looking at how to handle async await errors. Um, for no reason, you should not use try catch and start using this. Uh, this is just another nice uh, way of handling the errors and. It's up to you to choose uh, either of those in the right situation. Now, let's jump to a different topic. Now that we, so we have handled now uh, errors in JavaScript, async errors in JavaScript using this Golang way and this Golang snippet. Now, let, let's look at, um, let's look now at how to, uh, what happens with the stack trace with the errors when you get the errors? So I mentioned before that when you were getting errors, when you call an async function, right, it's executing the background. So now the main thread keeps executing things. And when the task in the background finishes, it returns a result to the main thread. So now the main thread can continue and act on the result of, the, of that background task. The thing in here is that the main thread have lost context of what was the background task. I mean, when was it called? For what was it was it called? And um, what is it expecting? When was it executed? Um, everything. It has no no background to it or little background to it. And you have to come up with all sorts of uh, code um, and patterns to to be able to tell what what's happening with that request or the dot then and dot catch that we have been seeing. But if there's an error, right? When when the background task uh, raises an error, it goes to the main thread, and then the main thread is gonna go. Okay, I had this task in the background that has thrown an error. Okay, I can see the error, but I don't know where it's coming from, so I don't remember who called it. I j I just know that it returned an error, so I'm just gonna show this error to the user. Um, but really, I, I don't know where it's coming from, so th that's a problem with uh, async. Uh, functions uh, when they are throwing errors. So in here, I'm going to try to explain how can you get more context or tell the code to get more context about your error uh, to be able to debug your code. So when you see the whole stack trace, you can see, okay, this function was called by this function, that was called by this function, that was called by this function, and then you go to the code and find a bug, right? So this is, again, the simple go to beach program uh, with the Antarctica, and now we have the main bocata de tortilla inside the go to beach function. What happens if we execute this code? Um, because make bocata de tortilla function is not defined, 
they go to the beach function, it's going to throw. And now the main thread wants won't know what, what, where, from where did it come from. Um, and it's going to print this. I hope you can see it. When we execute by the stack trace, we get preference error, may bocata de tortilla is not defined at go to the beach and the bad stack trace line four. So it's telling us, okay, make bocata de tortilla, the code that fail was inside the go to the beach function, but I don't know anything else. I don't know when was it called. It doesn't show us this line, right? This line here inside the main async uh, program. It's not telling us where or who called the go to the beach, which resulted in an error because make bocata de tortilla is not defined. Now, that's a problem. Uh, because it's difficult to debug now. So what can we do? There's a little bit of a trick um, that you can implement uh, in Node. Um, so you have the function go to the beach. And at the very beginning of the function, you save the stack trace. So you're, you're saving a variable. What's the context of that function? So you know, so the program knows um, who called it, when, when did it call it, uh, with what, param what parameters and what line and, and everything. So we create a snapshot of the stack and we save it into a variable. Now, when we try and make bocata de tortilla, because make bocata de tortilla is not defined, then we are going to catch the error and we're going to say, okay, this function is not here. I'm going to add it to my stack trace. The error, I'm going to put it on my stack trace so that the, the error contains all the information possible. And I'm going to throw that whole arrow up. Now, the main function will have all the context because you will see the whole stack trace because we save the stack trace the moment we call the function. So now the stack trace and all the information about the context is stored in a, in a variable, right? And, and we can use it. So it will look like this. Uh, when you execute better stack trace, um, it will make bocata de tortilla. Uh, it's not defined. And you will see the whole stack trace, and you can tell from where uh, go to the beach was called. And it was called in this line at users better stack trace line 16. Go to the beach, go to the beach. There's an error in Maple Cata de Tortilla. So that looks a little bit better and easier to debug than this, right? Now, this was happening on all versions of Node up until Node 12. So what happened with Node 12, which is now LTS, by the way, so you should be using it. Uh, it was released last year, uh, on April last year. And a new functionality that it brought or that it brings is that uh, uh, it now stores the, uh, it does for you this way of storing the stack. It, it does it for you in the background, in the um, behind the scenes. So you don't have to do this saving and it will do it for you. So you can see in here when we execute. So this line is for uh, executing my code with different versions of Node inside the Docker container. So you could see when we run uh, my bad stack trace with Node 10, uh, we get this bad stack trace, which is not telling us anything. But when you run it with Node 12, um, you can see this new extra line, which is telling us from where or who call the go to the beach um, function. Now, this is uh, a lot better. So you should be using Node.js Node 12. Um, and, and now uh, it looks, uh, in this example, it looks, a very, it looks very simple because the sample is very simple. But now if you have a more complicated example, for example, this one from the, from the Ryzen stack blog, um, well, we have several functions that call themselves. Uh, you lost the stack because they are all async functions. In here, you can see a comparison when you execute it um, with uh, with a no version of Node. Um, it's gonna it's 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 gonna it's not gonna tell you from where it comes. But when you execute it with uh, Node 12, it's gonna tell you that it was called from the function wait two, and that was called from the function wait one, and that was called from whatever function. So you have the whole stack trace. Now, that, that looks better. So basically, um, if you are not using Node.js 12 yet, uh, you should migrate all your projects to Node.js 12, which is the LTS. Now, I don't know how many time we have left. I think uh, a little bit, so I'll carry on. Um, so yeah, doing a recap. Um, 
there's a beautiful alternative way for everyone handling JavaScript, which is the Golang way. I'm not telling you not to use the try catch blocks, um, but you should definitely give this uh, pattern a try. Um, and also, if you're trying to, if you, your program has async functions, you better use Node.js 12, which uh, has better support support from uh, for async functions and for async stack traces. Um, be happy, be kind, and stay safe. These are the resources I use. Um, I'm gonna be sharing the slides uh, later on in the in a Slack, in Twitter, and I'm gonna update them to GitHub to my GitHub too. Um, you can all you can visit all those uh, blog posts and get more insights and more details on what I have explained here. Um, I hope it was useful and you learned some today, something today. Now uh, it's time for the questions. Uh, please use the comment section. I don't know where you have it here or here. Yeah, it's on the right, which is I guess which way is that? Maybe this this way, maybe uh, on the on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> we're just pointing in different directions. And <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> anyway, cool. thank, you yeah. the, thank you for the session, Jorge. Hey, it's uh, really really awesome. There's a couple of quest a couple of comments questions. Um, one, and I'd love to hear what what you think about the uh, the alternate. Um, let me switch over here. Uh, the, the alternate to uh, to some of the things that you've shown is uh, uh, is uh, task either. Uh, have you have you seen that on GitHub? Is that is that something that you're uh, familiar with or, or or able to kind of compare the two approaches? Um, right. So I I haven't used this new approach in any production code. Uh, I've just used it for my little toy projects. Um, I'm, I'm I'm very happy with it. Um, so far, I haven't seen any like big drawbacks to the new approach and i i have to say that i quite like it because uh, you can uh, you don't have to write uh, the whole function the whole try catch so it's less lines of code and um i, I think i'm already tired of using try catching all, all over the place um so i'm i'm personally and this is a personal opinion i prefer the way of having this uh, if error and then do something so i just encourage everyone to to give it a try and and, and see which option fit better to each project or to each programming personality, I guess. Awesome. Uh, question about the error.stack. Um, do you, are you aware of any performance penalty that uh, that, that introduces? Um, no, I'm not aware of that. As I said, I haven't, I haven't tried this code in production, uh, nor I have performed any performance or load testing uh on this um maybe if you try googling for that you might find some uh articles that are doing that but no i haven't i haven't done that check by myself okay awesome and uh in the in the final minute um just a quick question what do you think are the biggest gotchas for people who are who are doing async programming for the first time compared to compared to their norm their normal typical program right so one one of the um, one of the main problems that I found is trying to understand how to how these stack traces and the errors were working and how to handle them. Um, that's why I'm making this presentation. Um, the, yeah, the, I'd say that was one of the main hurdles. But if you so uh, this was a very uh, beginner session. Uh, so if you are learning uh, JavaScript or Node.js and and trying to get into the async await uh, wall, um, the more blog posts uh, you read and the more uh, the more samples you write, sample code, you don't need to write a whole application. But I, I really encourage people uh, to write their own little programs and play with it, play using await, not using await, using promises, promises here, promises there, and they will uh, after some tries, they will understand and realize and, and come to you and the, the idea will come to your mind and say, oh, now I understand it. Uh, because it's a little bit tricky to understand. And sometimes you can say, OK, why this function is triggering now? I, I wasn't expecting it. Or, yeah, I should, it, it should be waiting for the next function because I told it to await and it's not working. Um, but yeah, after after playing with it, um, you, you, you'll be able to grab that knowledge um, and, and yeah, and basically also read a lot of articles. Um, I, I'm, I'm conscious that the articles, within several articles, might be a little bit confusing because each article has its own point of view on 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 this thing. But in the end, this is code. This is it is what it is, and it has the same behavior for everyone. So yeah. no matter from which point of view you are looking at it, 
um, you probably uh, always have the same, uh, if you understand it, you're going to be able to um, write code in this way. Awesome. Jorge, we're out of time now, but thank you very, very much for your session. I uh, really, really appreciate it. And thank you for supporting all the talks. Um, next up, we have, what do we have? We have a break next up and then followed 